What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. It feels so weird to sit down and film. I'm definitely going to be rusty in this video because I'm used to filming like every single day of my life. I'm always, like I always have my equipment out, I'm always filming. And I have not filmed in a little bit over a week for, for you guys, for anyone, because um, why do I, I, my brain does the weirdest things, I swear. Like I can just make anything perverted in my mind everything it's a problem all right all jokes aside this is going to be somewhat of a serious video because basically what i want to do is explain to you guys why i was kind of mia and what happened for those of you that do not follow me over on my second channel my vlog channel because i have very i have like a very detailed vlog and a very emotional vlog over on that channel but i understand that there's not even like a quarter of the amount of people over on that channel uh compared to the amount of viewers that i have on this channel so i still wanted to bring it up really quickly. If you guys did read the title of this video, of course, you know that one of the things that I wanted to bring up is that I do have a P.O. box now. So I just opened that up. I feel very weird having a P.O. box because I, I, just, I don't think anyone's going to send me anything. I'm going to put it out like right there. I just, I feel like I'm an average normal person that just turns my camera on every other day and films my thoughts in my head and that why I don't know. So I'm going to put the address down below and um, I do urge you guys to please do not send me any gifts. Do not send me makeup. I just, I don't want you guys to spend your money on me. I would love to get to know you guys. Like send me a letter telling me about yourself, what you do for a living, your age, your family. Like just tell me about yourself. I would love to see pictures of you guys, postcards. If you guys have any questions or um, let me know what you want to see in videos or maybe you want advice on something, whatever it is. I just ask that you guys write, write on the envelope whether you want me to read it on air or not because for the ones that you know you want me to keep it private we'll definitely do that but I do want to start a segment here on my channel where I am reading them out loud to you guys and hopefully that kicks off and that goes good so that's all that I'm gonna say the PO box will be down below and I am so excited to hear from you guys because I feel like you guys always see me when I run into you in person it's like so amazing to see the faces behind the screen names because I do definitely recognize you guys like the ones that comment over and over on my Instagram or like my vlog family channel. I mean my vlog channel family. Wait, yes. Yes, my vlog family. Like some of you guys really do keep up with almost every single video and I definitely do recognize those screen names that pop up all the time. So when I have a chance to meet you guys in person, it's just amazing to be able to have a face to put to the screen name. So I think that this will just bring our relationship to the next level and I'm really excited to start that new series. And yeah, that is all that I'm going to say about the vlog channel. And now we're going to segue into a little bit more of a serious part of this video and that is why was I MIA? what happened because honestly you guys my life like almost completely changed within a blink of an eye and i'm gonna try extremely hard not to get emotional um during this video because whenever i explain it to a family member or a friend or anyone what happened to me i get very very emotional because i feel like my whole life almost changed before my eyes and i just was not prepared for it and never saw it coming so again if you want to see the whole behind the scenes like actually the day I got this news and the procedures that I had to get done and some very, very graphic pictures. I will definitely post the vlog down below so you guys can see that, but I do want to warn you that it is extremely emotional. There's a lot of tears and um, it, it kind of, it gives you an unsettling feeling in your stomach. So if you're a very emotional person, I definitely would recommend to just watch this instead. So I'm just talking about it instead of you like seeing me go through all the emotions. So. Here I go with the rambling. Let's jump into the story. So basically it all started when I went for my yearly annual. I go to my GYN and I get everything checked up um, because I am on birth control pills because I'm not trying to get pregnant right now. I know so many of you guys are against the birth control pills and you tell me, you know, why are you doing that to your body? There's other ways, but for me, it's just the easiest. I've been on birth control for a long time and it's something that right now I'm, I'm just kind of used to it. I always take my daily pill and I don't even think twice about it. That might change in the future. Um, but yeah, that's where we're at right now. So I scheduled an appointment to see my GYN because I was running low on my birth control pills. So I went to go see her and before they check everything down there, they always do a breast exam where they just feel for bumps. And this is something that my mom has taught me from a very young age to always just check, you know, maybe once a week or around the time you get your period to see if there's any bumps there, anything weird that you notice. So I do periodically do that. I don't do it as probably as regularly as I will now, but she was just like, I feel like a little, a little bump there. I want you to get that checked out. 
I was like, okay, and we went on for the rest of the appointment. I did not think twice of it. Uh, the reason that I did not think twice about it is because my the women in my family have very cystic breasts, and they all have cysts in their breasts, and it's not really a big deal. It's very common. You get it checked out. You make sure that it is a cyst, and that's basically it. So she did send me off to a radiology place that basically what they did is they ran a sonogram over that mass, and they were able to tell me that it was not a cyst. So I did not get this phone call until maybe two days later when I thought everything was gonna be okay. I was like, I got my birth control prescription. They found a little bump. It's gonna be a cyst. I already got it checked out. They're gonna let me know you're good to go. So two days later, I was not even like waiting for that phone call. And fast forward, I got that phone call and the lady on the phone was like, we want you to speak to the doctor. Immediately when I heard that, I freaked out a little bit because normally, you know, they'll tell you the good news, the receptionist right there, and it's not really a big deal. So they made me hold for the doctor, and he came on the line, and he basically told me it's not a cyst. A cyst is basically a little bubble that's filled with liquid, and what you have in your breast is a solid mass, and that is the way that cancer shows up. He did not say that, but uh, he told me that we need to look into it a little bit further, and... I basically flipped out because I was not expecting to hear that it was not a cyst. So I'm very like, I'm a very out there person and I outright said it to the doctor, is it cancer? Is there a chance? And you know, he was trying to keep me calm. He said, there's not really a way that I can 100% rule out that it's not cancer, but I don't want to tell you that it is. We just have to run a further test on it. Basically, you need to come in for a biopsy. So. I freaked out and uh, they were not able to get me in until five days from then to go and get the biopsy done. And then you have to wait three days until after that to get the results. So I called my mom and this is the point where I picked up my vlog camera and I told you guys about the whole situation and how the worst part is the anticipation. I was not even afraid of the procedure because I did not really know what I was going into. I was just really afraid of the results. and. I actually had just finished filming a video. I was filming in a dormy hall and it was like a regular normal day and I was just not expecting to get this news and it was like life shattering. Everything, I felt like everything could change in that moment. I was actually so upset that I called the doctor back and basically begged them to get a nurse in there so that I could have the procedure done that day. And since the doctor and the nurses heard how panicked I was over the phone, they were amazing. They actually got a nurse in that day to do the biopsy procedure. So I did also vlog this on my channel. I was not prepared for a procedure to be done because the doctor told me basically all that we're gonna do is stick a needle in you and get a little bit of that mass so we can test it, send it over to pathology and make sure that everything is okay. Um, so going in there, I really thought it was gonna be a needle in and out, but it was a procedure where they did have to numb up my entire breast. I got about six shots all the way around of lidocaine to numb it up. And then they basically went in with a little scalpel to uh, cut a little piece of my chest open, I guess. And they stuck this device in there that, um, it was a little bit more traumatic than I expected. It, it was basically a hollow needle. It was, it looked like the size of a coffee stirrer and it goes about five inches deep within, into your chest. And I feel like my boobs are so tiny. Like I can't, I don't even know. There's not even like five inches of like mass to go in there, but it goes like deep inside you about five inches. Um, there's actually a trigger that's attached to that needle and he presses it and it makes a really loud popping noise and it basically takes a piece of that mass and pulls it back out and he needed to get four samples. Um, I, I think that some doctors will stop at one sample but my doctor just wanted to make sure to get really good samples of it so I didn't have to go through that again. And uh, yeah, so he did it four times and each time it grabbed a piece of the mass and there was a lot of pressure. Um, my mom watched the whole thing. She said there was some blood involved. I was like, I don't want to see anything at all. Just seeing the lidocaine needle alone scared the crap out of me. So I definitely did not want to see the device that was actually collecting the biopsy uh, or the mass to run the biopsy. Um, and then after that, the nurses basically compressed my chest for 10 minutes to stop the bleeding. They bandaged me up. Um, over the next two days, I bruised really, really badly. I will put a picture up now to show you guys what it looked like the night of the procedure, but after that, it definitely bruised a lot, lot more. And um, yeah, the worst part was just waiting for the results. So my life kind of stopped while I was waiting for those results. Like I did not feel like talking to anyone. I didn't feel like working. I didn't feel like enjoying anything because I just was like, Lee, like you, 
you might actually have cancer. And like, I'm one of those people that you just never think that anything bad is gonna happen to you, like anything that life-changing. And to like actually be in fear of getting the results and what am I gonna do with my life? Like, I'm engaged, I want kids, I, my parents are still young, they're gonna be around for a long time, my sister's my best friend, and it's like, the thought of, um, of like leaving this earth at 27 years old and your mind just goes into a place that you really don't want it to go. Um, you think, what if, what if, what if? So it was like so eye-opening. It was insane. Like now, I just appreciate every single day. I'm sorry, I even, I got off track. Um, they did end up calling back um, two days later and they scared the shit out of me then too because also they were like, can you please hold for the doctor? And I had to hold for the doctor for like 15 minutes. And I was like, why couldn't the receptionist just tell me? Something's wrong, so I was freaking out all over the phone and the doctor did tell me that it was a, a fiber alioma, I think. I will put the word here because I know that I am pronouncing it wrong. But basically, it's a benign mass. So I do have to get it looked at every six months just to make sure that it stays benign. There's no cancer. Um, but. I guess it's something that is popular in girls in my age bracket. Um, but it was just a very, very scary event that took place in my life. And I just, it really just hit me out of nowhere. And um, hence why I disappeared from YouTube for a week and a half because I just didn't feel like doing much of anything. They definitely tell you to stay positive when something like that happens, but it's so much easier to, to say that than when you're actually in it. Um, of course, you hope for the best, and so many people prayed for me, and uh, I know Melanie and Mike, my sister and my fiance, both got in trouble at their jobs because they just were not able to focus and be mentally there, just because, again, your mind just goes to a place where you really don't want it to, and you always think the worst. But anyway, long story short, I'm okay. I'm still, I'm still <laughs> healing because, um, again, it was a procedure. Wasn't prepared for that. Still very, very tender, but... I'm just glad that everything is okay because the week before that I was actually going to the doctor for shortness of breath and like chest pains and I even mentioned it here on my channel. That all was due to stress but since it was like so coincidental that I was having these chest pains and shortness of breath that I was thinking these are the things leading up to finding the bump, it's going to be cancer and I was just very very scared, very very scared. Um, so I definitely urge you girls if you don't do breast exams schedule an appointment with your GYN to find out how to do it and even if you do definitely let her test it let him or her test it as well because I didn't feel anything and even after she was like here feel right here this is where it is I still didn't feel anything so it's just something that you need to catch in the early stages because god forbid that it's malignant anyway you guys I feel like this video has gone on for so long again it's been a long time since I've turned on my camera so I'm definitely rusty but I just wanted to update you guys on where I've been I am going to post that vlog down below again definitely be warned that it's very emotional and very graphic so if you do want to watch it I will post it down below and um, that's where I've been I will be returning back to my regular schedule um, and yeah, I'm just happy to be back and appreciate every single day. So thank you guys all so much for watching. I'm sorry for scaring some of you guys there, um, but thank you all so much for the support. It means so much to me, and definitely take note of the P.O. Box. Everything will be down below. I would love, love to hear from you guys, and I think that's about it. I got a lot of other videos to jump into filming today, so thank you guys all so much for watching again, Mwah. and I will see you next time.